Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tanisha, and welcome back to learning about reptiles with me. So today's topic is going to be about snake growth. Now, a lot of people don't see snakes the way we see our dogs and our cats and the fact that we can see them as kittens and puppies and watch them grow into adulthood. And so a lot of people don't think of a snake of doing that. And so actually they can. They need the exact same things that we do as humans and other animals do. They need to eat, they need to drink, they need to rest, and they need to exercise. And so they need all these things just as we do in order to grow and thrive and to be coming adults. Um, and so I just wanted to talk about that with you guys today. So as I've mentioned before, snakes, have, they can be hatched out of an egg or they can be born live births, also known as ovoviviparous. And so whenever they're born, they're hatchlings. And whenever they're born in um, birth, they're in a litter. And so... Um, and so you have your Kenyan sand boas and your Brazilian rainbow boas, and you have even types of lizards that um, are ovoviviparous, like the blue tongued skink. But for the most part, a lot of them are hatched from an egg. And so as babies, they have to go through a process called ectasis, and that is just simply shedding their skin. So even though we do shed our skin as well, we do shed skin cells daily, um, you really don't see that on humans. Um, but when it comes to a snake, they can shed their skin and you can see the whole shed skin process and they leave their skin behind, their shed behind. Um, and just think of it as this way. So say you, you bought some skin clothes for the new school year and you wore them all year long but then the next year you try to put those same clothes on and they're a little bit too tight for you right so that's and so you have to go and buy new clothes so that's kind of the same thing for a snake so whenever they're little they eat and they eat and they eat and then they grow and then that skin gets really really tight because their skin doesn't grow with them so they have to shed the old skin and get new skin so whenever that sheds or whenever that skin gets a little too tight for them they grow and they grow out or they shed out of it so they can get new skin which is pretty cool right so I have an example here of some shed skin and as you can see or this is from a ball python and you can see the two different types of scales that's on there so right here is the back of the snake and then you have the horizontal lines which is their belly and so this is what us reptile lovers love to see whenever we're having or have our bait our own um, snakes is that we like to see a full body shed skin because that just shows that your snake is healthy and your snake is happy and thriving and so they even shed their eye caps and so snakes have a like a little scale over their eyes to help protect them because they don't have um, eye, eyelids, so they can't blink their eyes. They don't have tear ducts to where it washes anything out of their eyes that gets in there, so they have an eye cap to be able to protect their eyes from any kind of um, debris or anything that can harm their eyes. And so even that sheds off during the shedding process. Now, why does the snake shed um, other than just growing? Another reason is because they can get rid of parasites. Um, a lot of times ticks will um, attach to their bodies. And so whenever they shed, those ticks actually come off with the shed. And so that definitely helps them to be able to get rid of those um, annoying parasites that can bother them and even harm them and cause them diseases. And so they're able to do that as well with shedding their skin. Now, the food source for a snake can go anywhere from teeny, teeny, tiny fish all the way on up to large um, mammals. And so just obviously it depends on the size and the size of the snake and the type of the snake. Snakes can eat fish, like I said, they can eat birds, they can eat other reptiles. That's why I say if you see a king snake in your yard, leave it there because they are amazing at taking care of those venomous snakes. So a king snake is a non-venomous snake. And so let them do their job and take care of the venomous ones like copper heads and so but yeah they can eat so many different types of animals and they pretty much only eat um, something that is big around as the largest part of their body so a lot of times people fear a lot um, about uh, 
a small ball python being able to eat their cat. And that cat is much bigger than a snake, than a ball python is. So I believe you're safe. But, um, but yeah, so the snakes, they have a different variety of food. And so um, the more they eat, obviously, the more they're going to grow, the quicker they're going to grow and become adults. And so I brought, or I have behind me two different, or two snakes. They are the same exact species, but one is still fairly a baby and the other one is a grown up. So um, an adult um, animal. And so I'm going to pull the first one out now and we're going to talk about the difference between the two. All right, guys. So like I said, this is my absolute favorite snake in the world. This is called a Brazilian rainbow boa and this is my dream snake and so her name is Nala so she is a female and so she is a juvenile so she's a little bit bigger than a baby but she's about two years old and so she does have quite a ways more to grow at least two maybe three more years before she is completely adult size and so it's kind of hard to see in this type of lighting, but you can kind of see the sheen of an iridescent. And that's where they get that rainbow boa name from because they do have a, um, a rainbow looking effect, iridescent. And so this is from, uh, this is in South America. And so she does love the hot climate. And she also likes the humidity. She loves she loves being in the humid, warmer climates. And so the iridescence isn't ne um, necessarily the type of scale or the color of her skin. They actually have a transparent skin with microscopic um, ridges in their scales, and so the light refracts off of those microscopic ridges, giving them that rainbow effect on their in their shed or in their skin, I'm sorry. And so she is a really super cool snake. This is a non-venomous snake. A lot of times people like to see these type of bright colors and think venomous, but she is non-venomous, which means there's no toxins or anything in her that can harm us, okay? So um, just gonna let you guys see a little bit of her. Again, she is my absolute favorite snake. And so I'm going to pull out the adult version of her now. And so stay tuned for that. Okay, guys, so I do have my adult version of this snake right here. I'm going to have to do my best to try to angle it in a way to be able to see him. Um, he is new, and so he is learning his environments. And so usually when I get a new snake, I like to leave them alone for a week or two um, before I start handling them and picking them up. And I don't want to stress them out or cause any issues with him. And so... Um, I don't really know how to turn my camera around, so I'm just going to have to do this a crazy way and try my best to get him in the shot, and hopefully I can succeed at that. Um, but again, before I show you guys to, um, to show him to you guys, um, again, this is an adult version of a Brazilian rainbow boa. This is a male. Females tend to get a little bit bigger. These guys can get anywhere between five to six feet. And so sometimes on up to seven, it just depends on that type of snake. And so um, females do tend to be a little bit bigger. So my girl could potentially be a little bit bigger than this guy in the future. We'll see how that goes. But, um, but yeah, so this is an adult guy. This is a full grown male. Um, his name is Simba, so I have Simba and Nala. So again, I apologize if it's looking crazy whenever I try to show you guys the snake, but I am not tech savvy sometimes. So I'm doing it from my phone instead of my computer because I knew he was not going to let me pick him up today. So, um, so here he is. So I really, really hope you guys can see him. He's pretty curled up in a ball a little bit right now, kind of doing his thing. But I'd say he's about four, five feet or so. I haven't held him um, enough to be able to stretch him out. Um, he is quite a bit bigger than she is, obviously. I'm not exactly sure how old he is. Um, but again, he is full grown. And you can see, hopefully, that his head is quite large compared to my girl. He is a darker species, but he is just absolutely gorgeous. Love him.
So I'm just kind of moving it around. So hopefully you guys are getting a good view of him as well. All right, guys. So there you have it. That is the growth of um, a snake. And obviously there's snakes that are smaller than these guys. There's also snakes that are bigger than these guys. It just completely depends on the type of snake you have. But this is about an average size snake. Like I said, they get about six feet um, and fairly, you know, thick around or so. But they are a very impressive snake. They're beautiful snakes. Like I said, they're my favorite snakes. Um, and just know that Snakes are a lot more like us than you think. Um, they do thrive. They do need to grow. They do need to eat. They do need all the things that we also need to be able to order in order to survive um, into adulthood. So I hope you learned a thing or two. And I hope you enjoyed my video again this week. Um, I will be back again soon with another animal. Hopefully another topic. If you guys have questions, please feel free to um, ask me those. And I will get you those answers and talk about it in our next video. You guys stay safe out there and have a wonderfully blessed day.